joining us in the studio today to talk about the work that he's doing to ensure a future for Afghanistan's cyclists. Sylvan, before we turn to you, I'd like to start with you, Zarifa. Today you're living as a refugee in Italy and waiting to settle permanently and build your new life. Tell us about what your career as a female athlete was like in Afghanistan before you left and when you realized that you needed to escape the country. I'm very happy that I'm here and can talk and raise my voice. Um, before takeover of Taliban in Afghanistan, um, being a female athlete and to this sport, it is very, very hard and it's very difficult to be an athlete uh, girl in Afghanistan. And I faced too many challenges being as an athlete and um, I, uh, I, but I continued to face all the problems, the challenges, the oppositions of the people and the way of their thinking. But I continued my efforts and uh, in 2018, I officially joined the Eagle Cycling Team in Afghanistan and uh, I participated in different races and I had uh, great opportunities there. But when Taliban took Afghanistan, um, I did not have those rights I because the activities of my father, my brother, and myself put the lives of all my family members in danger um, because I was a girl that I was active in the society and I did um, sport. And it is something that for the tall one, it's very, it's very hard to believe. Mm -hmm. And they don't want you, they don't want the, to see the girls that they do sport or ride a bicycle. Um, they don't want to have the presence of girls so, and my father was a military for many years in Afghanistan, a commando. We went to my father's hometown uh, that is very far from our city. Then after some days when I thought that the situation calmed down a bit, I, um, I, I went to Kabul and first to search a way out to go out of Afghanistan. And I went, um, I waited in Kabul for six months in a safe house. It was very um, hard for me to be there. And then um, I had to go to Pakistan. Well, so that's why I'd like to turn to you, Sylvan, and talk to you about your efforts in helping rescue Zarif and also other Afghani athletes who are attempting to flee the country. Tell us how you ended up getting involved here. So I received, um, after the fall of the, uh, uh, of the country to the Taliban, I received a call from, uh, from a journalist, a cycling journalist, uh, who uh, told me that she was aware that of, um, of some of the humanitarian activities and work that, that, that I've been involved in. And uh, she asked me, she said, look, with your, um, with your contacts, either in Israel or in Canada, um, are you able to help? Uh, she was trying to rescue the Afghan uh, national uh, female cycling team. Right. And I said, look, I, I've never been involved in something like this, but let, let, me, let me ask around. So I went out to my network and I discovered the most wonderful hmm. Israeli NGO called Israel. Yes. And um, I, I'd heard of Israel, but you know they, they are normal. Normally, their their work is um, is in terms of getting to disaster zones, uh, floods, tsunamis, uh, earthquakes, and being first on the ground and helping out right. in, in various countries, um, and exhibiting the you know our Jewish. Uh, uh, imperative of, of tikkun olam, um, of, of, of uh, mm -hmm. improving our world. Um, and I got to know uh, the CEO, brilliant guy, uh, Yotam Politzer, and he said, look, I, I think I can help. So he was able to go out, he found uh, operatives on the ground in Afghanistan, Afghanis. And uh, in the end, we ended up um, with three separate missions so far because right. the work the work is ongoing. It's continuing, yeah. And uh, in the end, our mission expanded because um, uh, different groups heard that an Israeli group was being successful in extracting uh, Afghans from from the country. So we ended up with Afghan female uh, judges, police officers. Um, uh, uh, families of uh, of diplomats. We even we, even the 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 uh, UN ambassador, the, the Afghan ambassador to the United Nations, his family, and of course the last Jewish family in Afghanistan. And we, we were able to bring out uh, in the end about uh, I would say uh, over 400 people uh, so far, and we were able to resettle them in four countries. 
Italy, as, as you've heard from Zarifa, uh, Switzerland, France, and Canada. Zarifa, I, I want to talk about um, the fact that you actually got to compete in the Afghan or in Afghanistan's national cycling competition in Switzerland in October, and then we're going to get to Sylvan how you're involved in this and as well. Um, you know, obviously, women's sports events have been banned by the Taliban as a whole, so it's not possible for you to compete in Afghanistan, especially after fleeing. What was that experience like for you, and why is it so important for you to still represent your nation, given everything that's happening there? Um, this experience to participate in women um, cycling championships of Afghanistan in Switzerland was very, very important for me that I had to participate there and showed my presence with other my team members that I did this. And um, first there was some challenges, but then um, those challenges were solved and Mr. Selvon Adams has helped us to come to Italy and um, that he supported us in Italy. And again, um, he supported us to go to Switzerland and participate in the, uh, this competition that was very important for me because I wanted to show for the Taliban or those who want to stop the girls to not do sport. I wanted to show for them that if you stop just me, there are many, many other girls that they won't stop. They never, you cannot stop them. So I wanted to show this and I wanted to advocate the rights of all Afghan girls for other girls that they have this right and they have to um, be um, like, they have to take role in the society and it is their right. Absolutely. Well, Sylvan, I know that you even invited some of these Afghani cyclists to compete uh, and join Israel's Women World Tour. Can you tell us about that? So, uh, first of all, I think it's quite remarkable that, uh, that we held the Afghan Women's National Championship race in Switzerland. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't, of course, it couldn't be held in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And so um, there were 45 female competitors all of whom uh, were part of these missions uh, that, that we were able to extract. We are now, in, uh, beginning in 2023, we are uh, forming two women's cycling teams, a world tour team, which is the highest level of, of the sport, um, to, to match the, the men's team that we have, which also competes at the world tour level, and a development, what we call continental team. And uh, the night before the competition, we were kicking it around and I said, why don't we offer a professional contract to the winner of the race? In the end, it was a sprint finish between two, uh, two girls together. And uh, it turns out, and, and there was this much separating them. Right. It was a very, cl very close. tight, close finish between the two. And it turns out that the second place finisher was the sister of the first, of the winner. Wow. So we couldn't very well uh, separate the two sisters not. and we decided to offer professional contracts to both of the girls and they they will be riding for us and hopefully uh, we'll, we will have at next year's Women's Tour de France we will have an Afghan rider riding for our Israel Premier Tech Roland female cycling. Well, just amazing. I mean, there's just a step forward in, in really just enhancing relations also between Israelis and uh, and the Afghani people, especially given how the Taliban views Israel. The qualities of Israel and Judaism um, as expressed toward the Muslim world, um, we, yeah. w you know, we're using sport to build bridges, to build friendships, and of course to help people where we can. And uh, I think this is the power of sport. And I'm very proud to be to, to be involved in these activities. Again, we carry the name Israel. That's our that's our identity. Um, Zarifa knows who who was involved in, in in helping with her rescue. When I I, I went to meet um, the second group in in Albania. So uh, the first group uh, 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 ended up going to the, um, yeah. Dubai. The second group went to uh, uh, Albania. These were transit countries. And the third group went to Pakistan, which uh, Zarifa Zarifa was. Uh, was there. And I ended up um, flying to Albania 
And I asked them, we, we sat down, we had a nice conversation, and I asked them, you know, had you ever heard of Israel before? And they said, no, we, we haven't, but we have now. And I said, what do you think? And they said, we didn't know anything about you, but we love you now. So Just we're building remember. bridges and showing our, the, our true nature, and, um, and, and I'm, I'm very proud to have been involved, and I'm happy for your freedom, uh, Zarifa. I'm so excited for your future. Um, of course, we're all concerned with for those people left behind, but you are a wonderful role model and an example for, for women and girls all across your country, and I'm proud to know you, and I, I was so excited to meet you after the race. Um, I, she was shivering, by the way. I, she yeah. was shivering, and I said, are you cold? She says, no, I'm just excited. Oh, and uh, she, she, anyway, right. it was, it was, it's great, and I, 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 I'm, I'm excited for your future, my dear. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you both so much for joining us today. Just a, a really heartwarming story and very excited to hear that we're going to have some Af Afghani competitors on Israel's women's team. A lot to look forward to. going to have to watch that race myself. Thank you so much for joining us, Sylvan. And thank you so much for joining us, Zarifa, from Italy. Thank you so much.